my dying breath bear forth this curse upon thee. In the end, when this malignancy has won, you shall be like it, burning in a lake of sulfur and brimstone. <laughs> Forever and ever. of Saisia Manor. I was in the twilight of my venerable career when it first came to court. In my most sombre nightmares, ones I have awakened from in cold fright, I imagine that my mind, body, and soul have been put through this last night. And he is no longer mad. He has brought madness to our house. Far beneath the floors, I hear the cracks of gold chanting of an abhorrent language, as I traps quietly from the halls to busy my mind, I hear from beyond locked doors muffled laughter and disquieting laughing sounds. Carriages come to the manor of and Anton himself escorts their cargo, usually oblong boxes or hefty burlap sacks, into the catacombs he's excavated below the foundation itself. I beg of you, intervene on my behalf and unmake this horror from the earth. And I believe him to be a practitioner of blasphemy, necromancer, in service to a being who praised your last note to the moon. He calls it the Round. Forgotten language wore forth the blasphemous secrets of life and death. Was it heretical of me to study? Of course. But it would never once fail me, even until my end.
abominations that crawl beneath the mud no doubt drew in ravenous anticipation to my arrival. Anton was a foolish creature. He did not know the fury I would impose. The first time I laid eyes upon Saisir, I felt overcome by an insidious horror, as if the manor itself was regarding me with contempt. One of Anton's famous revelries had found its way outside. For weeks, the attending sycophants would ply for political sway with the Baron. I found that the main entrance was locked, but there were answers in the outlying building. Recognize the altar from the key of Solomon. They were bound messages displayed for the one invoking the ritual on the altar. Evidently, you left these for me throughout the estate. The words recited carefully, I was transfixed by a perplexing feeling, like a dream that I could control. <sighs> Going outside, a conversation carried forth that led my way. It was between Anton and Emilia. Tell me, dear, why have you been tense this evening? What do you suspect of me? Who are these people? They're not local. The thought this evening was to celebrate our marriage. So where are our families, our courts, our friends? These are an envoy of private individuals. From far-flung lands they've come to indulge in a particular fascination. One that is mutual. Our marriage is dear to them too. Don't worry. Although, maybe not for the reasons you suspect. Enough. I don't want to hear about this. Good night. Oh, my love. Soon. Soon you will understand. A sinister overture possessed the silence. Overcoming the suffocating dread, I plunged forth into the void itself.
without a mournful presence in the suits themselves. It was only later that I discovered why. against her will, has informed me of her plan. While she did not reveal the means she used to smuggle out the letter, I was told it was you who was the intended recipient. And so, Witchfinder, I declare you a mortal enemy. Whatever you imagine to comprehend about me or my great work, make no mistake. You are woefully ignorant. Revenants of abhorrent malignity dwell restlessly beneath your feet. Already, they smell your fear and salivate at the thought of your descent. Know this, fool. After I break your mind, your body, your soul, I won't kill you. I will torment you relentlessly until the last of the stars wither in eternal, frigid solemnity. Madness. found the journal of one Albert Kepler, the man you convinced to deliver your letter in secret. Tell me, how did you convince him to abandon his life for you? Was it pride? Love. There was a passageway hidden behind the bookshelf. Curious that Anton built so many avenues that led below. What was the ultimate intention for his guests? And so, I fell 
into the ravenous jaws of Sysia. <laughs> I knew I was unwelcome in this domain of madness, but stalwart I remained, pressing deeper into the festering catacombs. Cyclopean tunnel. I found myself in the decrepit basement of the Overlook Library, unaware that I would soon meet you, Amelia. Each of the tomes bore a revolting subject matter. I am still suspicious how a baroness could so easily comprehend the occult. Tell me. Is that why Anton was drawn to court you? Who goes there? Uh, it is Johan. I received your letter. Where are you? I'm over here. Johan, thank God. I need your help getting out of here. Time to explain. Anton has sealed me within this library as punishment for disobedience. I was in the cellar preparing a ritual to free myself when one of his damned servants was sent in here to keep an eye on me. I fled into my study and locked the door. I need you to finish what I started. That way, we can both be free. My aim was to remove his incantation against me. To complete this, You'll require a few of the tomes around here. I left one in the cellar. Oh, the other two are near the historical chamber upstairs. I think. I remember I accepted your proposition. I would complete your ritual. Ah. 
Such a fool I was to believe your intent was pure. The creature was once a guest of Anton's, having undertaken his process of transfiguration. What a horrific notion. To be the embodiment of malign, eldritch madness. Not paralyzed of control. Locked behind your own eyes. in hand, I went to the ritual circle downstairs. As swiftly as I could, I unbound the spell, sealing Emilia to the library. Now that I know you deceived me, I want you to tell me. What really spoke to me from behind that locked door?
The room was dark, permeating with an unnatural energy. I discovered many artifacts about you, none more important than the gravestone outside. Your first child? I failed to judge you for its accidental demise. I would have done the same as you. As I meditated above the tombstone, I felt my consciousness transform into a fleeting dream. In a vision, I would gaze through your eyes, witnessing horrors without comprehension. April 19th. 1836. He withdrew from me emotionally, stowing himself away behind an indefatigable calmness. My access to our home was restricted, before finally ending in permanent bedroom arrest. Servants of a singularly disquieting cast tended to my baser needs, but it was the loneliness, above all, that tormented me. But as the weeks wore into months, I was made aware of a singularly terrifying company. Someone was growing inside me. He was still born. Why did you do this to us? Anton, I, I did not harm the child. How did you kill him? I just want to rest. I'm so tired. How did you kill him? In the months after the miscarriage, Anton fled the manor and abandoned me to walk these halls alone. After months of lonesome excursions down every corridor, through every trail in the forests, I reached a conclusion of mind that he no doubt intended for me. Last night, I celebrated what remained of my life, and the wonderful memories I will take with me. I danced and sang, cried and screamed the whole night through. I did not want to forget the sound of my own voice. One last celebration. Now, I will end this madness. I will not succumb to starvation, nor the frigid grip of insanity. Instead, I shall rend my arms with a knife until exsanguination embraces me with its cold, final, Recourse.
you truly believe I would leave you forever? No, no. No, my love. We are now joined. Eternally. Renewed. Without sacrament. Without the burden of life. You won't be able to kill our son again, Emilia. Not like this. We will try again and again <laughs> until we've brought our Lord his vessel. Why are you crying? Do you not see the divine purpose? <laughs> Incantation left me unconscious, only to be discovered by Anton's lurking servant. I have a dim recollection of being dragged deeper and deeper into the bowels of Sysia. I came to my senses in pitch blackness. Irons cut sharply into my wrists, and my feet were bound at the ankles. Suspended to the wall, I awaited the arrival of my captor. Johan. We meet at last. Welcome to my home. Welcome to Sasia. It is a curious thing to be found in places not known. Tell me, how did you discover my secret? Who told you of my particularities? Surely this will help you remember their name. Share words with you, creature. <laughs> no matter. In time, you will reveal all to our Lord. Good night, Witch Finder. Let my dying breath bear forth this curse upon thee. In the end, when this malignancy has won, you shall be like it, burning in a lake of sulphur and brimstone. <coughs> Forever and ever. But that would not be the end of me. As I rose to my feet, I stood in awe of the intricate ritual twisted in abhorrent suggestion. I knew at once I had been brought back from the dead. A dull ache of inner pain coursed through my cold frailty, but I still possessed the inexorable fire of my conviction. He should have buried me in cement if he ever desired victory. The Master wants to meet you, Johan. So he has commanded I bring you back. A pity, but I dare say I will... Enjoy the sport of killing you over and over, on and on, until your very soul is broken. Come, 
Join me in the Priory of Sasia. You have much to discuss with my lord. I resolved to destroy Sysia in the only way I could. The room I was held in had a powerful divination ritual. With my grimoire, holy water and salt, I could perform a cleansing banishment. Anton was no doubt in possession of these, fear of raising up that which could not be done. If I was successful, all of the unhallowed souls interred beneath Sysia would forever be dispelled. Rendering a pyrrhic victory at the least. I dare not recall the abhorrent madness which nearly seized my grip on sanity, Amelia. The depravity of his work. What a fiendish aberration of faith. I pressed forth into the darkest recesses of Anton's blasphemy. Traveling the abyss, I finally found what I was looking for. I stilled my mind for the journey remaining. I thought, I thought of home. I thought of eternity. Call my name. Blasphemous tones beyond even my own comprehension. If I had the ability, I would have torn every brick down from that pagan temple.
I found the holy water at last. I crept out of the priory, with only a few tasks left. We worship the false creator, the master of our material realm, as our true lord. He is the Leviathan, his wings span from shore to shore, and his emphatic will cultivates us in twisted purpose. From the blackness between the stars he dwells, and as he rebelled from his father, so have we from ours. Casting aside our pelagic ancestry, we embrace our black trip to scorn and apathy. His voice resonates within, though we see not his form. His blood courses in our blackened hearts, though we feel not his warmth. His soul possesses the worms that gnaw at our bones. From that inner world we direct the malignancy which infects the faults and the weak. Only from below can we truly see the heights. Interrogation between Antoine and an unknown supplicant. You were the topic of conversation, Amelia. Speak, crone, lest I torture you further for your insolence. Do not presume to hold sway over me, Welch. You will tell me at once who gave you the letter. Who told you to deliver it to the mainland? Amelia, I will kill you! Angled beneath the antediluvian wreckage, Anton had succumbed to a fate twisted by his own hubris, a fitting demise for something that believed it could betray the wishes of a demon. I feel thy presence, Witchfinder. Gaze upon your rotting trophy. Hold your head high in victory. My uh, lord may have punished me, but it was I who failed him. I could not believe Emilia betrayed me, betrayed our family. Uh, I accept my fate. Have you done the same? There is no victory here for any of us. You've bound our souls to eternal damnation. You will rue the day you sold yourself to that abomination. At 
least I walked beside my god. You will be enraptured to his frigid, eternal tomb. Divinity is an infection spread through the air by the poisonous tongues of lost men, bisected between truths stolen from older beliefs and outright fabrication. Your exalted mythos was groomed, pruned, and manipulated throughout the course of time. From those untold aeons before man first crawled, lie the lost secrets that only the dead can remember. And I... I studied them all. I've cultivated a thread dating back thousands of years. Before the Nile split, and before the first bricks of Memphis were laid, I became enraptured by a horrifying proposition. A moral sacrifice that crept between the gates of my imperial mind when only such things can in my quietest dreams. I raised the dead and plied their terrified, agonized minds for the answers I sought. I was in relentless pursuit to make contact with a singular being, the voice of the void itself. I knew it was still alive, without ego, without purpose. A cataclysmic maelstrom of unreality, beckoning me to grant it access to reconstruct the banal restrictions of my reality. It called itself the Ram Lord, Lucifuga. Enough, creature. I will not stand to listen to your blasphemy. Before I draw my last breath, I will burn everything to the ground and purify this unhallowed crypt. The abhorrent madness from out of time has seduced you, but I will trap it forever in these Stygian catacombs. Have you any last words, Baron? <laughs> last words. I am already dead. Forever I will lie beneath the weight of my failure. The earth can assimilate the rotting, for sure. But I will join the chorus of screams buried underneath the very stones of Sycia. There is nothing left for me upon this world. My only love has betrayed me. You seek my damnation. And my lord has forsaken me. Show mercy, Witchfinder. When you have won, burn it all. Evening storm, 
and shivering from the morning frost. His frail and broken visage stood trembling before me. But he was not dressed as a vagrant. His attire bespoke a curious, weary disposition. Wordlessly, I invited him inside. Watery gray eyes stared through me, conveying an aspect of distraction. He kept pace with me through the halls toward a guest suite, where his needs would be tended. An insidious smile crept upon his face as his head swiveled from side to side, gazing up at the portraits of my ancestors. Never once did he remark verbally. We came to a halt outside the room. I moved opposite to him and propped the door ajar. A made bed, warm lanterns, prepared table, and calming aromas of incense beckoned to him. He looked sullenly upon me and made a single utterance. Below. Without reply, I closed the door. He continued his walk, showing an obvious intention to the direction this time. I followed a few paces behind him, trying to better understand. His gait had poor form, but not a soldier's limp. His arms were held against his sides with purpose, and his head only averted to gaze upon portraits. He took me through the east wing with only our footsteps to break the tension. Reaching a main junction of stairs, he paused briefly before disrobing. The frayed cloak of maroon fell, revealing a maimed and bandaged frame. The tattered scraps of cloth belied the horrific quantity of scars he possessed. With the locomotion of a stiff marionette, his descent into the darkness began. I grabbed a lantern and followed suit. We passed down through the Overlook Library into the inner sanctum, and from there, tailed off into the crypts. I did not know how he knew of their existence, but would not confront him without answers first. With only the sting of my lantern light to pierce the miasma, I crept forward in an attempt to keep up with the traveler, whose stoic march continued undeterred by any obstacle or sense. We reached the inner bowels of my art. Digouts, holes, and vaulted chambers dedicated to the nuance required for the interrogation of the deceased. We reached an older room, knee-deep in the ashes and bones of the ones who bore no more use to me. The traveler got down to his hands and knees and began to dig feverishly in the carnal remains. With abandon, he tossed various limbs and protrusions into the air behind him. I stepped out of the way and extended my lantern to observe with morbid fascination. He began to patiently inspect the wrists and hands before discarding them with careful consideration. Before long, an audible gasp broke the bustling of his efforts. He snatched up the intact bones of a left hand, and before letting out a broken sob, held it close to his chest. Now completely unaware of my presence, I stooped low, directly next to him, and inspected the hand. It was from a woman, a ragged indigent who only cried for mercy, if I recall. Of all her presumptive humanity and uselessness in answering my questions, she did bear a singular quality. From birth, she was missing her last two fingers.
with my arms, my legs. I was powerless to stop it. You know what I must do. Please, just make it swift. Speak with me a while, Johan. Tell me of your journey. We have little else to do. For as you must know, there can never be an escape for us. Cecilia will degrade into a dilapidated ruin. A curious study of a family vanished. And a manor abandoned. But we will never be found.